Now a new book by a former insider takes a critical look at the government's actions during and after the financial crisis. The fallout from the crisis and those decisions is still reverberating on the campaign trail this fall. Sheila Baer was a key player as head of the FDIC, one of the nation's chief bank regulators. She worked with Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner, Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke, and former Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson before stepping down last year. Her new book is called Bull by the Horns. Judy Woodruff sat down with Bear yesterday. Sheila Bear, welcome. Thank you for having me. Nice to be here. So let's just, just to get some background out of the way, okay. who and what do you think is responsible for the financial collapse of 2008? Oh, there's plenty of blame to go around. Um, I think at the end of the day, it was greed. It was just uh, greed that was unchecked uh, by government and, and government regulators. Um, this idea that this is all caused because the government wanted poor people to have mortgages, that's just not true. I think uh, expanding access to home ownership for low-income people was a rationalization, uh, but it was not a driver. A lot of people were making a lot of money, making a lot of very irresponsible loans to, uh, frankly, vulnerable parts of our population that didn't understand these mortgages to begin with, and regulators did not step in to stop it. And broadly, what is it that you believe the Bush and the Obama administrations right. did right and did wrong to right. deal with it? Well, I think uh, the uh, missteps going up to the crisis really are both the Clinton and the Bush administrations. I think that the three big ones are uh, we didn't raise bank capital requirements, we didn't constrain the ability of large financial institutions to use leverage, to use borrowed money to support the risk taking. Instead, government took a lot of actions to allow investment banks in particular to take on even more leverage and fund their uh, operations with borrowed money instead of their own equity capital. The Federal Reserve Board had the authority to set mortgage lending standards across the board for everyone, banks, non-banks, mortgage brokers. They didn't do that. And then finally, of course, and this was in the Clinton administration, Congress just said that nobody's going to regulate derivatives. The SEC couldn't regulate them. The CFTC couldn't, uh, over, off exchange derivatives. The SEC, the CFTC, even state insurance regulators were told hands off off exchange derivatives markets, so we don't think they need to be regulated. So you're saying government uh, had its own share of they responsibility. Did. They should have said, well, what happened. It, yes, but it, I would say this is because industry lobbying to stop these kinds of uh, steps from being taken. And yes. what about in response to the crisis right. once it happened? What was well, done right and what was right. wrong? Well, I think, as I've said before, I really question uh, the Bear Stearns bailout uh, was done in March of 2008. We were not in a crisis situation. We were in a deteriorating situation. I've never seen a good analysis to justify that. But I do think when the government stepped in to bail out Bear Stearns and support its acquisition by J.P. Morgan Chase, and, and Chase was requested to do that, that that set up an expectation that the government was going to let these other institutions uh, fail. And so that sent a signal to Lehman Brothers that was having a lot of problems, that they were probably going to get a bailout, too. And they were a lot bigger than Bear Stearns, so they decided, well, you know, we, they didn't really take steps to correct themselves. And because the market had an expectation that there were going to be bailouts, People didn't take steps on their own to fix their problems. And, and you're very critical in the book yes. of, of the, the whole bailout process right. and said I these am. banks yes. should have been let go. As you right. know, the government, the administration right. Right. pushes back right. saying if we had let these, these institutions go, right. the problem would have been much worse. And right. what we've done right. has at least stanched the right. bleeding. We're now back. Right. We're growing. It's right. slow, but we're growing. Right. Well, I would agree at the end of 2008, we were in a situation that was spinning out of control, and we needed to do something, so we threw a lot of money at it. But the, the major institutions that were insolvent, uh, they were having what we call liquidity problems, so they were having a hard time because everybody was just so fearful. They were having a hard time borrowing money to continue to fund their operations. But they had equity capital. They were not insolvent. Citigroup was insolvent. Merrill Lynch was insolvent. AIG was clearly insolvent. But the rest of the institutions, I think, probably could have bumbled through. They might have needed some liquidity support, but they, were, they had enough capital to absorb their losses. But in 2008, uh, we, were, we were dealing with a lot of unknowns, and so we threw a lot of money at it, and I guess I can live with that more. But in 2009, we had a stable system at that point, and that was really the time when we needed to start imposing some pain and accountability. Very sick institutions like Citigroup should have been fundamentally restructured and broken up. But we didn't even we couldn't even get conversations going about that. Do you feel you did enough to speak up internally yeah. against all this? When Congress did authorize all this TARP money, it was my clear understanding, and one of the reasons I participated in these bailouts was that we were going to get a big loan modification program, wide scale, to prevent unnecessary foreclosures from occurring. And it never mm -hmm. happened. Didn't happen under Bush. Uh, didn't happen under Obama. So I do. Uh, that does still make me angry. And no, I spoke out about a lot. I was being criticized for speaking out about it a lot. 
on the bailouts of maybe I should have done more. You know, we were asked to uh, guarantee all the get debt of all the financial institutions, and and we said no, we weren't going to do that. Uh, I, there's a I re recall the an anecdote where I was kind of I felt like I was. Uh, ambushed in a meeting with in Hank Paulson's yeah. office. He and Ben were there. Tim Geithner was on the phone. They hand me a script that says the FDIC is going to stand behind all liabilities in the financial system, and I wasn't going to do that. So we dialed that back. I mean, they wouldn't even, there's an anecdote in my book uh, where we were at least trying to say, let's ban bonuses. If we take any losses on these bailout initiatives, then executive bonuses should be banned. And the other regulators wouldn't even support us on that. So yes, I did push. I didn't get much help or support. I was kind of surrounded. Uh, we were there by ourselves. Maybe I could have done more. I don't know. You know, how many times can you run into a brick wall at 90 miles an hour? But we did what we did. Going forward, uh -huh. Sheila Bear, what is it that you see in the prescriptions of either President Obama right. or Governor Romney right. that will fix the problem as you see it today? Right. Well, uh, both say they want higher capital requirements, and, and that's good. But the problem is we're hearing people talk good games, but actually getting the rules in place. We have more capital in the banking system now because the market has demanded it and because we've had this, this stress testing process, which is a discretionary process. But the rules still allow a lot of leverage. We need to get the rules changed. They both say they want to do that, but when you get specifics, well, how much leverage do you think is appropriate? Where would you set the capital requirement? You know, you really don't hear many details. They both say they want to end too big to fail. Thank goodness. I mean, even Alan Greenspan has said, if they're too big to fail, they're too big, right? So if they can't be, if they can't fail without hurting the rest of us, then they need to be broken up now. But you know, again, Dodd Frank has has uh, provisions to empower regulators to do that now. But will Mr. Obama or Mr. Romney appoint people who are willing to use that authority, who are committed to ending too big to fail? So if you're a voter out there mm -hmm. trying to make a decision, how yeah. do you make a decision then, based well, on what, hearing what you just said? That's one of the reasons why I wrote the book. I, I try to break down some of these issues. I don't think this gets changed. The financial services industry got too big. They got too big as part of our economy. They got too big in their political influence in Washington. And I, it's on both sides of the aisle. It's in both political parties. So unless people educate themselves, I know people are busy and you've got all sorts yeah. of things to, to learn about and, and uh, prepare for. But that's one of the reasons I wrote the book, to, to, to uh, describe some of these simple concepts and simple steps that need to be taken and make some accountability with our elected officials to support regulators and appoint regulators who are willing to do it. Last question. Yeah. So are you optimistic this gets fixed or not? I, I'm not. I, I really am not. Uh, we heard, heard uh, there was, a, thank, thank you to Jim Lehrer, there was a Dodd-Frank <laughs> question. I appreciate that at the first debate, the second debate, which was driven by town hall participants. We didn't hear much. And, uh, and they're not really talking about it on the campaign stump. And my fear is they're both worried about alienated all this political money that comes in from the financial sector. So again, I think people have to educate themselves, speak up, get angry, raise this, uh, or it's not going to get fixed. Sheila Bayer, the book is Bull by the Horns, and uh, we're going to ask you to stick around and ask a few more questions online so great. our viewers can hear more of what you have to say. That Thank you. Great. You bet. And you can watch more of Judy's conversation online.